the Geek Lab on a very special day because this is a computer I have been sort of slivering over for a long time and I finally, thanks to uh, Callum who sold me this for a good price, got one in the lab. So let's just have a quick flip up. There we go. Oh, see her in her full glory. I'm going to have to alter this camera. I'll be right back. Oh my god, this beast. Look at that. Look at all that that goes behind the monitor. It's so big. <laughs> I've had to call the camera right back. These things are oh, beautiful. They were in 1988 when they came out. High end portable computing. Now, people think this is a laptop. It is not. There were no batteries in here. It was never designed to sit on your lap. It was never designed to run on battery. Although the last model, I do believe, uh, had a battery. Probably gave about an hour's service on it. They were never designed, uh, initially, to run on battery. They are mains only. And I fix it. <laughs> Side profile. It is massive. Uh, now, look. At the time, you were able to get small, comparatively, small uh, laptops. But that was not the aim of the system. People look at this and think, bloody hell, it's huge. And yes, it is. And it weighs 15 pounds. But it's got a handle. And any computer with a handle is instantly cool. <laughs> Anyway, yes, so let's put that away. Uh, yeah, it runs on mains only, as you can see here. And the point of this <coughs> was to have a lot more power than your average <sighs> portable laptop luggable at the time. Uh, this is actually in here, basically a full 286 computer. It has an EGA connector, was it CGA? CJL or EJ to the back, and I'm not turning around again. It's one of them, and if you plug it into a monitor, you get a full color operational desktop computer. And oh, has mechanical keys. <laughs> They're not the clicky type. This is the, the sound is the sound of them hitting the stoppers. It doesn't have that mechanical click like an ABM would. See, uh, but they are beautiful, and. The best thing of all, if you haven't realised, this is 87, uh, sorry, 88, so your computers in general at that time, black and white, poor quality monitors, they were terrible to look at. Hinge is a bit slack on this, but it's not too bad, it will hold its position. Uh, but this, none of that rubbish here. This is a gas plasma display. Usual disclaimer, in real life, that display, there is no flicker whatsoever. It is pin sharp. If I zoom in on the lettering there, yes, this will give you a headache with the flashing, but you can see, it doesn't do it justice. In real life, that is pin sharp, clear, there is nothing, there is no flicker whatsoever. The letters do not move. And that's the advantage of the gas plasma display at the time. It, the resolution of it, was superior to any LCD display of the day. Uh, just press F1. So, if you had the money for one of these, these were not cheap computers, even compared to portables. These were expensive pieces of kit. If you can afford one of these, uh, and you're serious about business. Remember, this is from a, a time when laptops were not aimed at the gaming market, or home market, or anything like that. They were mainly aimed at business users. They were expensive. They were heavy. Uh, desktops, Amigas, STs, they were for the home. These were for the travelling businessman. The salesman wants to put information into a database and then send it down the telephone line and get sales quotes and all that. These, this was not aimed at the home user whatsoever. We'll play games, obviously. But, yeah, so your business guy working on this all day is going to want a crystal clear screen. So that's what you got with the gas plasma display. And I wish I could show you this in real life, but very hard to film it. Uh, now, I can smell something coming out of this. Now, let me explain something. 
the reason he passed this on cheap was because it emitted smoke and he switched it off uh, I suggested putting it on outside on a BCD and check see if it still worked which it did and it fired up fine uh, so I thought initially you know perhaps there's a motherboard battery and that would go and that was the cause of it but it turns out not because I've been running we've been doing a few things with this and it was running it might do it again actually but it emitted smoke out the back horrible still stinks uh, I actually quite like the smell I'm weird and I realized from the sound it made and the smell that it's likely to be a tantalum uh, tantalum what do you call them uh, capacitor that's gone on an expansion board which should explain why despite doing this twice it's still working fine uh, so what we're going to be doing shortly is having a look taking this apart because it does need restoration case is uh, no dusty it's got this grot on the back and it needs cleaning up so we're going to take it apart and have a look what their issue is but I, I'm betting my life it's an expansion board that's gone it does need a new BIOS, BIOS patch because that is dead so we've got to check that that's not leaked everywhere as they traditionally do and the other issue at the moment is that the floppy drive will not work uh, we've tried everything if I just show you I've tried high density single density all sorts uh, will not play game uh, if I go eight, it just the light comes on, and you can hear the heads move initially, but beyond that, it does not do anything. So we don't know whether it's something to do with the BIOS, or it just needs a service, needs cleaning. We are going to find that out. Uh, there's also this has got 640k, I believe, base memory. It's also got four megabytes expansion, which is detecting, even though there's explosions coming out the back. So there's obviously a four megabyte, which is massive in this thing. Uh, four megabyte expansion back there, which you can still see despite the explosions. So that might still be working. It might be another card that's gone. Uh, uh, see. So uh, I've. Bleh. Apparently, it's in the expanded memory. So, what we need to do, well, what Paul Smallman has suggested, and I'm going to do live here, is edit uh, config.sys. Because I've been sending pictures over the Facebook group of the different files, and he has to see config.sys, which he realized is missing uh, one of the drivers try and get this best I can for you to see what's that look like let's have a look mm. right let's have a look still smell it oh. you realize that there's a line missing uh, a device line du -du -du. EM386 is missing from that file so if I uh, boom, put it in here oh, let's put the caps lock on where's the caps lock ah there it is uh, device uh, equals C but, uh, backslash there's a backslash on this jobber how many flux to my backslash my backslash is so lost oh there it is uh, DOS backslash EMM 386.exe okie dokie so if I now go function is it function? no control no Alt, one of them, I knew it was that. File, exit, yes, I want to save it. And if I now reboot the system, control, alt, delete. Let's see if it spots that memory. Now they're obviously going to have the BIOS issues because, hmm, the BIOS is dead. Sorry, Tom, like a sup of tea there. But uh, online, incorrect machine, what? EMM386 not installed. Incorrect machine type. Doesn't like that one. Okay. Uh, that's not 386, is it? It's 286. Yeah, it's still seen base memory, so that ain't gonna work. My looks of it. I'll have to tell Paul in a bit once I've finished filming. 
So, yeah, although it's got the 4 megabytes, it's not seeing it. Online, there is a setup disk, uh, but will, should allow me to uh, set it up to see that. But to do that, without taking the hard drive out, we need to get the floppy drive working. So, what we need to do, and to see what that, what's wrong with that battery, we need to take this bugger apart, which is what we're going to do now. Uh, and we're going to get these cases cleaned, uh, get that gunk off, and other bits of mess, and shine it up and get it looking good. Because uh, there is a bit of crud in it, which needs to be removed. Uh, this keyboard here, it looks like it just flops up. But it's a dee -dee -dee -dee. it does not. These covers here, they've gone to all this trouble to hide the screws. But it does make little handy dandy hiding compartments. So, I'm going to take these screws off, get this keyboard out, and we'll show you that, and then we're going to figure out how to get the rest of it apart. So, um, I'm a bit short on small screwdrivers, so you have to have a big one. Alright, come on. There we go, right. Now, we did do this at Callum's place, just to see if you get access to the motherboard, to the... Uh, BIOS RAM, but BIOS RAM? BIOS battery, but that did not happen. So, we take this out. There is a ribbon. And then there's some uh, FM shielding. RM, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Don't know what it's called. We need to get under there and get that out. And why do I still have it running? I do not know. Okay, we'll shut it down. It's probably the best, wisest thing to do. It sounds like a jet ending shutting down because of that. Switching off the mains. Sounds like a jet ending shutting down because of that. And here's our keyboard. I now need to work out how it's attached into its socket. Which you can see over there. So I'll put you over here out the way. You can look at that socket. Isn't that exciting? Oh, it's going out anyway. So it's just a... Does this lift? Does this lift? I'm just trying to work out for... Oh, there we go. Yeah, that just comes forward. Ribbon goes in, and it pushes. There we go. That's a simple one. And there's the ribbon end. There. Right, so in here we've got multiple chips. I do not know what they are, but you may be able to tell me. Uh, we've got a D874, Jobber, 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 Intel 1987. Uh, this thing, which is a m 5 l 842 these two uh, AMD chips. I'm going to take pictures of these in a second and I'll put them in the Facebook group uh, for people to nosy over while I strip this further down. So uh, I'll put the pictures also in the video here so you can have a look yourselves. I would estimate that this is memory here. I have no idea why there's so many hundreds of resistors there, but there we go. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take some pictures, put them in the Facebook group, and then we'll come back and work out how the rest of this comes apart. I'll be right back. Right, the only screws I found beneath, there's one, two, three, four, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's two on the end. Uh, I'm a bit weary of removing these because I don't know what they're holding. So I'm going to try, first of all, just removing these two and seeing what happens. It could be that there's more screws under the feet. I don't know. I would suspect that's likely. Why aren't you? Hey, well, I don't mean. Right. Let's uh, have a look. Oh. No screws under the feet. Okay, back in. Right, so, aha! There were three under the handle. You little buggers hiding away there. I'll have to put a smidgen of glue under that uh, thingy to get it. Keep it restrained so it looks like this comes away 
these three. Which is good. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, we have some more wood. And I suspect I may have to, well, I will have to turn it over. Shake some screws out. One, two, three, four, all the same type, which is handy. That keeps the workload down. I'm trying to find them. And there's that one. All right. I've taken the side bay off too. I uh, don't need that at this point. So, uh, there we go. Right, let's see if we can pry this top off at all. Don't want to damage it, obviously. Right, it looks like, oh, I don't know. Maybe two screws at the back here. Holding this, so we can. Do, 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 do. So that's all panel wants to come away. So look, what will this expose? That one's loose already. Right, come on. Up. Two short screws. Note for the video: two short screws at the back. And down that side but they uh, I suspected they actually just held that so um, 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 um. Hmm. let's see if it'll lift <coughs> back around <sighs> oh, the joys are all computers even creaked Hmm. I'm gonna have to uh, cut the video I think and be back okay I gave up on trying to do it myself and read the instruction manual no don't read instruction manuals but anyway yeah it turns out that getting in is far more scary than you think you've got to peel the label off here <laughs> Take this bezel off, which cracks away, and you think you broke it. And I've got to get this off just to get in the bottom. <gasps> what a pain in the ass. Oh no. Oh well, continue. Yes, if somebody asks you to uh, open one of these up, don't bother. Uh, it is a full job. I've actually got this. Let's take the display off as part of this. Yes. And we're still not in. It's like a full disassembly just to get in the bugger so uh, I'm reading the instruction manual off the phone while doing this so yeah can't do the same the same can't do both at once so I'll be back as often as I can doing this be right back continue with this mission if anybody ever tells you to take one of these apart tell them to flick off because it is not a case of just popping the case open it's a full disassembly job of these. Ah, which is wonderful. Let's strip. You can't just take the monitor off, you have to strip the monitor. Christ, it's, uh, yeah, not an easy one. But we're getting there. That's the main thing. I'll be back. Right, we are inside and, uh, hmm. Interestingly, can't, still can't see anything damaged. Now the power supply is here. We know this is working because everything here works. Unless I wonder if one of the rails has gone down because uh, I wonder if that's why that's not working. Let me see it. Let me show you. I thought that perhaps it was some expansion board uh, that was causing issues, but there doesn't appear to be any expansion boards in there. And what I can see, I can't smell. That's the PSU, um, and you've got the uh, normal boards back here. Hmm. 
not entirely sure what's going on. I'm not sure if that's an expansion board either. Could be. Uh, right, we'll dig further in and see what's going on. We need to get to this battery as well, which is hidden somewhere. Where? I do not exactly know. But these things are an absolute pain. The case was a nightmare to get off and it appears. I may have broken this in the process. I did hear something rattling around before, so I don't know if it's been broken before or whether I've done this. My cack handedness. Uh, yeah, might have to glue that back on. Although it might hold there. Well, let's just see. Uh, right, got that one out. Let's have a look. Sorry if they're getting in front of the camera here. I'm going to try and try and get this one off. See if we can get this PSU out. That would give us. Hmm. Let's have a look. That is four. Right. You. You, 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 and. No, nope, no more. It just comes away. Okay, this exposes. I'm hoping our issue is not in here. Hoping. Pretty is pretty sealed. Good job on that. Now, those are the screws from that. So we've got two on that side and one on that side. I still have found no sign of the battery. I know it's near somewhere. Looks like hmm. corrosion here. But uh right, keyboard adapter. Let's have a look, let's just get this off and see what's happening underneath. See if we've got any obvious suspects as to who might be causing the issues. Do -do -do. Another screw here. This has got a not surprisable, but there we go. Right, have a quick nosy. Anybody want to be exploding back here? Oh, I think you got ya. Yep, found one. So if this is a separate video board, it's gonna be a dead video board. This ain't gonna output to CGA because uh, let's show you. What we've got. One there. That looks like it's blown its head off. And possible that one. It says 101 on the side by the looks of it. 101. Uh, that might not be dead because this one's the same here. That one looks the same. Might be just how they've marked it. But that tantalum on the side there. Definitely an X tantalum. So if we can focus on it, get its numbers. Nope, it looks like. Ooh, can't tell. Something, ten, something, something. C3, anybody? If anybody's got the technical specs, it is C3 at the rear end. That is definitely. An X tantalum. Um, so it looks like it'll just affect the CGA them. Uh, these. I don't know about those two. That one there. Oops, sorry. That one there. I don't know if that's dead or not. Come here. Focus on it, you little bugger. Right, that one. 
Yep, yeah, I don't want to focus. That one has got silver on the side, so... It could be. But we've definitely lost that one. So, now there were two explosions that we know of. So, I'm just having a look around the board for anything else that may have gone. Let's just camera to focus today. There we go. So, I'm just looking out around the board for anything else that may have gone. You can see that tantal on there. It's uh, got a bit of a <coughs> on the side. No others look like that, so it could be an X one. Uh, give me some advice if you do know. And. I need to get that clock battery, wherever it is. So I think this one, choose the, this one may have to stay apart until we can, uh, yes, until we can get the parts. Hmm. I don't want to risk putting this back together and taking it apart. We'll go in and have a look for any sign of the second one. I'll be right back. Right, it's a long time since I've been uh, doing computer repairs. It's, uh, it's more enjoyable when you haven't done it for a while. But yeah, uh, we found that one. So I've uh, put the power supply back. Just, ah. No. I thought there was another one, but that just appears to be a mark. No. Uh, right, I'm going to go in. Wish me luck. And try and find... I can see another one. There's stuff going under this floppy drive here, so if I... Where's my screwdriver? Right, we are on full light, by the way. Uh, right, let's have a look. Where's this thing go? Bit of that there. Right, we have... There, there, um... Possibly over there. Let's just take these two out first. Just like this one. Now there's its uh, connector, but uh, we'll still see if we need that to come out in a bit. Let me just, that belongs there. Right. Yes, there she goes. Alright. It's around salt enough. Okay, I'm going to have to pull the connector. There we go. Yeah, I was hoping some other chemical would get that off, but oh well. No, it's really, really I stuck that. Uh, I don't know what to do to remove that. It's that that really, really stuck. So if you've got any uh, tips then, please mm. let me know. Other than that, if you enjoy videos like this, then uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, I'm not actually cleaning the floppy. Floppy. Uh, Social media links down below. Right. Facebook, okay. If you want to support the channel, here. we have Patreon as well. So, other than that, I uh, hope you enjoyed. I Thanks very much for watching. And any tips, one. please let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this, this just part of this video. My fingers, and so part two, mark, hopefully, something. won't be too long. All under here, there's nothing major here that could go bang. We've got this Dex Duel 3M. I have no idea what it is. Let me know if you do, because I don't, I'm not going to play with it. So there were two explosions, but I can only find evidence of one. Uh, and I've still not found the BIOS battery, which is bloody weird. Unless it's one of these chips. It might be a, uh, oh, what you call it? Yeah. What is that? What you call it? Oh, the real-time clock but, uh, chip. It could be one of them, but I would usually stay on it. I think I'm going to have to look at the instruction manual 
again. But I'm happy that there appears to only be one explosion. At the moment, uh, this floppy drive, it's not standard idea, is it? No. Uh, probably people screaming at me in the video now. Uh, hmm. So, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Yeah, I can't see any evidence. What a second explosion. May have a look in there just in case. Mm, PSU. Uh, well, I can't see anything. And I can't find the real time clock. I'm going to send a picture of that to the Facebook group to see if people know what that is. Oh, what's that? Positive, positive. Weird. Don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look in the instruction manual to see if I can find more references. I'm going to send that to the boat group. And, uh Hmm. I'll quick look in there, see if we can find any obvious issues. I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a diagnosis on taking the PSU apart. Uh, it's very well protected, but we got it apart. I found our major culprits here. This cap here, as you can see, bang, exploded on the top. Failed as it's designed to. Here we go. Ouch. And. Doo -doo -doo. Yep, on the mains, I don't know why this is. I'm not an electrical guy, but you can see. Oh god, there's another one. Uh, this one has failed there, across there, on the mains. And this one here has failed there. Now, this thing is still works. I have no clue how it's working it will explain why the floppy drive is having trouble because obviously when the power line rails will have dropped uh let's apply that uh so what we're we going to do what's the next step well i could just go out get the parts and replace that but knowing my luck there'll be <coughs> damage somewhere else in the system and i don't have the knowledge or kit well i do have the kit but i don't have the knowledge to test it and keep going back and working on this thing I and mean, you've got all sorts of things here which could have been affected by this so obviously put stress on the system because that's gone that's gone and that's gone uh there could be other stuff gone so what i'm going to do is take this to work we have a an engineering department electrical engineering department i will ask them very nicely uh if they wouldn't mind rebuilding this for me because they they can test it they can rebuild it and i'll offer them some beers uh, Callum is concerned that he's off sold me a death trap. Uh, no, it's not a death trap. It, it's failed as it's designed to fail once it gets old and stressed. And I've seen these go before. This is these are used on the BBC Micro, and they're they're notorious for it. So, no, it's 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 failed as designed, and I'm just amazed that it still actually powers and goes. No, no issue. Pop my floppy drive. I'm not tantalum at the back. So. Um, I uh, I wouldn't mind them getting that tantalum done as well, but I have to get this motherboard out. So I will. That'll be the end of this video for now. I don't think there's any need to take that apart at the moment. Uh, yep. I'll get this put safely apart, and I'll get this to work, and uh, see if the guys there will very generously rebuild this for me. It's not often I ask them for quite ask them favours so I hopefully they will if not <laughs> now I'll have to just try it myself <laughs> I don't like playing with these things so that's it for this video uh, hopefully part 2 won't be too long away other than that if you've enjoyed the video uh, no 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 in the meantime while well, the electronics side of it are uh, Sitting around waiting on their summer holidays here after 30 years of well on and off service uh, This is giving me going to give me an opportunity to work on the case now you can see there was a gunk at the back so I've put some oil on it and Well, that's really in there because that doesn't appear to want to come off at all 
even with the uh, the old oil trick. Hmm. So I'm going to be doing as well. Have you got any ideas how to get this? This is really resilient. It must have been there a long time. Uh, I just want to check something out. I'll be back in a moment. Yeah, I was hoping some other chemical would get that off, but oh well. No, it's really, really stuck that. Uh, I don't know what to do to remove that, because that is really, really stuck. So if you've got any tips then, please let me know. Other than that, if you enjoy videos like this, then uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel. And I shall be cleaning the case of this in the meantime. Uh, social media links down below for our Facebook and Twitter. If you want to support the channel, we have Patreon as well. So other than that, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. And any tips, please let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this first part of this video. And um, part two, hopefully, won't be too long. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>